Okay, so today we're going to go over how to create a lens with a virtual background uh, or green screen. So if we look at our final product over here, uh, if we tap through, we can see that we can cycle through a few different backgrounds. So we'll go over how to set that up and go over a little basic scripting uh, to make this effect possible. So in Lens Studio, let's start with a new blank project. And now the first things we're going to do are we're going to add a screen image to our scene. So we come to the objects panel. If we type image, now you can see we have a few different options. An image object will exist in 3D space, so you could stick something to the user's head. In our case, we just want the background, so we're going to choose a screen image. Now when we do that, you'll see we get an orthographic, orthographic camera added. Uh, so this is essentially just in 2D space. You can think of it as like a scanner. You stick everything in and you're just scanning in like a 2D document. And here uh, we have our screen image. And over here we have just a placeholder image. So another piece of setup is in the resources panel, we need to add a segmentation texture. So segmentation is how Lens Studio um, cuts and separates objects out. So you can see we can choose the background, just the hair, shoulder, face, head, or the sky. In our case, we want portrait background. If we click here, we can see that uh, we'll end up with the person and the background uh, separated. All right, so now that we have this kind of setup, now let's go ahead and load in our images. So in this example, I'm just going to be using some space images. It's a good place to get a free images is pixabay.com. So you can come in and search for whatever you want. So let's look for space. And if we choose an image, we can download for free. And when you're downloading, I recommend choosing a size somewhere around 1280 by 720. Now this one's 1280 by 603. Uh, that's because this resolution is a pretty good balance between um, image quality and file size. Because the lenses were limited to 4 megabytes, and if we have multiple images, that can really add up quickly. Uh, so I won't go any higher than the 1920 uh, resolution image, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and stick with 1280, because these images are in the background, and Snapchat doesn't save images. Um, when you take a snap, it's not a full resolution image. So go ahead and just find a few images you want, um, anything you want, and download some of those. And then in the resources panel, you can add from files, or you can select your files and drag and drop. All right, so here we have a few images. And let's go ahead and choose our screen image. And I'm just going to drag one of these over onto the texture. You can also click here and then find your image. So over here you can see we have our image, uh, but it's in front of the person and it's not filling up the whole screen. So what we need to do is change the stretch mode. So fit will make sure the entire image fits in the screen without stretching it. Fill will make sure the image fills the entire screen without causing any stretching either. So we lose what's on the sides of the image, but we're filling the full height. And if we were to switch to desktop, like if someone's using snap camera, then our image still fills the background without any distortion. So let's go back to our phone view. Uh, so this is looking good, except we can't see the person. So now we're going to use that segmentation texture we um, added. So click on the orthographic camera. Over here we have a mask texture and the mask is going to let us hide or show certain parts of the scene. So click here and select your segmentation texture and click OK and uh, it's all good. Now with the segmentations uh, we can actually invert them so you could have the person be the image and show the actual background. But in our case we want to make sure we see the person. All right, so now we have this, but it's just a single image and we can't tap to cycle through. So that seems like a pretty basic feature, but it's not built in, so we're actually gonna do a little bit of scripting to make this work. Now, we don't need to do a lot of coding. 
So if you don't have any coding experience, don't worry. And we're going to step through this um, together, and it won't be too difficult. So in the resources, we're going to click on this plus, and up at the top, choose script. And we can right click and rename it, or just leave it as script. So we have a script resource, but we still need to add it to our scene. So let's click on the orthographic camera. Now we can really add it anywhere, but I'm going to add it here. So over here in the inspector panel, I'm going to click on add component. I'll choose script, add script, and then I'll select that script we just created. And we don't need to do anything else over here. Okay, so now our script is added to our scene, but it's not doing anything. So let's go ahead and add some code. So to edit it, I have to click on it here in the resource panel, come up here, open in, built an editor. So now here we have a code editor. So this JS code uh, just means that we're writing JavaScript. JS is short for JavaScript, not to be confused with Java, which is a separate programming language. And then these two slashes um, mean this line is a comment line. So that means when the code is actually running, it'll be ignored. So this is a this is a good way to leave notes to yourself or to others. But Snapchat actually lets us um, add a few extra special commands here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, provide an input for a screen image and then another input for our image textures so that we can use them within the script. So I'm going to put slash slash and then a space just to keep it more readable. I'll do at input. Now you see this turns yellow. Uh, the code editor is going to highlight keywords to kind of help us view what's going on. And I'm going to add a space and I'm going to put in a component and I want a image component. So I'm going to click here. Uh, we need to make sure our spelling is correct. So it is a capital C, capital I. And so this is telling our lens that we want an image component. Now we need to give it a name. So I'm going to call this background. And now we also need an input for the images. So I'm going to do another at input. And now things in the resources panel are called assets. So I'm going to put asset dot texture. I'm going to call this images. And now if we save this, so just hit control S. Now if we click on our orthographic camera, we see we have a couple inputs. But there's a problem here. We can only choose one image, but we have four images that we imported. So if we come back to our script, we're going to put square brackets. And that means this is going to be an array or a list. So if we save that over here on our script object, we see if it's now changed and we can click add value and add multiple images here. So now I'm going to click here on the background. I'm going to find our screen image. And on the images, I'm actually going to delete these. I should have left one. So you click on the first box and we can actually select all of our images. Just hold down control, select their, all your images, hit OK, and now they're here. All right, so, so far our script is letting us specify our screen image that we want to change and the images that we want to use. So next, let's work on detecting when someone taps on the screen. So inside Lens Studio, uh, there's a special we can think of it as an object or command called script. So everything built into Lens Studio, um, we can access um, by typing out an object and then dot. So the detecting someone taps is just kind of like on the lens itself. So we just need to do script dot. We're going to create event. So as we type, we can see it's starting to auto-complete, auto -complete, so you can hit tab and do a parentheses, and we are interested in a tap event. And now we're going to bind our code to that. 
So you can see we have these parentheses uh, kind of showing us where we need to put our stuff. So we can't just put our code in here. We have to create a function, parentheses, angle brackets, and then hit enter to give us a little bit of space. Now this, if you're new to coding, uh, so far this is a lot, a lot of new information. So in the description, there is a link to a page where you can just copy and paste the code if you really don't want to bother with this or if you get lost. All right, so um, coming back to here, we have uh, a function, just reusable code. Uh, we can put this somewhere else, but um, just keep these simple. We're just going to type it here. So let's just go ahead and type print parentheses and the word tap and then we end our line with the semicolon and we save it and if we come over here and we click you can see the word tap shows up down here in the logger alright so we're detecting when someone taps now we just need to figure out how to change the image so to do that we're going to create a variable so we type var or var I'm going to call this index I'm going to set it to equal to zero. Now most programming languages when you have a list of values uh, you use an index of zero to access the first one, the second item in the list you access with the number one and so on. So we're going to start at index zero and now um, since we are reading our background image from this list here I want to make sure whatever image is actually set here is coming from this list so we don't have anything weird as the person starts tapping. Like if they tap and then depending on what image we have set to the screen image these might show up out of order the first time through. So I'm going to set this background image so to access these inputs we have to start with script dot background so the background image provided to the script and then it's going to be dot main pass with the capital P dot base text and it's going to be equal to so we want to access our images so it'll be script dot images and we want it at our first position so we'll go ahead and use index which is equal to zero so this line is saying take our background image set its base texture to the first image in our list of images. This just makes sure that when the lens starts it's going to show the first image here. Alright, so now that we have that going um, let's come inside of our tap event and make it change when we tap. So if I tap I'm going to increase our index. So I'm going to type index and I'm going to put plus equals 1. So the plus equals means take whatever value is currently stored in our index, add 1 to it, and resave it as index. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this line, put it here, and save it. So now each time I tap, our index will increase by 1, and then we'll set that background image to the next item in the list. So now let's come over here and if we click we can see the background changing but once we get to the last image once I click we see an error down here and we now have a highlighted line telling us where the problem is. So let's go ahead and print out our index so we can see what's going on. So the first time I click, we get an index up to 1, to 2, to 3. But now when I click, we're running into problems. Now, if we remember, we start counting at 0. So an index of 3 is the fourth item in the list. And we only have four items. You can also see here value 0, value 1, value 2, value 3. Um, those are like our indexes. So an index of 4 doesn't exist so our script can't set the new texture so we're going to add in a little check so we'll increase our index 
now we're going to say if our index is greater than or equal to script.images, so our image list dot length, now some angle brackets, we're going to set index to zero. We'll just start it over. Now I could just say if it's equal to length, if our index gets to four, that's the length. Uh, but in programming, it's nice to prepare for the unexpected. And if you're doing something elsewhere in the code, it's just nice to have this extra check. So for whatever reason, our index is too high, we'll set it to zero to start things back over. So let's save our code. Our lens resets. So now we can click, click, which our last image. Now if we click, we can see our index is back to zero. And we can cycle through our images again. And that is that. Now you can leave these two print lines here. Uh, this will only ever show up here in the log. It, it won't show up in the actual lens. Uh, so the nice thing about this script is if you don't like scripting or don't want to do it, um, you can use this script in other lenses without having to type it out. You can create a new script, copy this, paste it in, choose your background, add however many images you want, and it'll just work. So now we have our lens working. You can test it on your device, give it a name, a preview, an icon, submit it, and you're good to go.